Okay, I am going over, well, first, I'm Glenn Pearson. I bought my first DSLR three years ago this month, actually. So, <laughs> I don't know why you're clapping, but. <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm a wedding photographer, I do a lot of weddings. I used to do a lot of family, but I'm kind of moving away from that a little bit more, but I still get people contacting me all the time. Um, what I'm going to do is shrink this back down because that looks way too stretched to me for some reason. I'm going over the new spot removal. I'm going to be talking about uh, fixing skin mostly and also removing distractions from your pictures uh, using the new spot removal tool which is really awesome in Lightroom 5 uh, and I'll show you why in just a second. How many of you guys have used Lightroom 5? <coughs> just a few of you. Do you guys like it so far? Pretty good. It's the best, by far the best one so far. I love the, the tools, and I will show you why. I, when the beta came out, I started using the beta, and I liked it so much, even though it had glitches, and I had to close it and restart it like every five pictures. I used it exclusively. I edited a wedding in it, my first one, uh, when it came out, and I loved it so much that I just edited. That's all I did. So. Um, I wanted to show you this picture first. This is just a business portrait I did for him. He uh, and uh, I'll show you how to get rid of some of the wrinkles. I don't like making the skin plastic. I really don't like that. I don't use Photoshop hardly ever. Um, I use Lightroom for most of my stuff. I'm not against Photoshop, but I do everything in Lightroom and I like it that way. Um, for getting rid of wrinkles and stuff like that, little spots like that, um, I always drop the opacity on my brush. If you do too much it starts to look a little bit fake. Even though it does pull in skin from a different place, it doesn't look as natural as if you drop the opacity a little bit. So I always drop it uh, 55 in that range. And then before, with all the other versions of Lightroom, you had to click one spot at a time, then move it where you wanted it, click. Now, in Lightroom 5, you get to paint it. So you can't do that in any other version, and you can see your <laughs> That's why you always need to move it. And one thing that's cool about that is you can actually move it somewhere else. And with a lower opacity, even though that's a different texture, it's nice, blurred, smooth, um, you get off that. And you can see it in there, but if you drop the opacity even more, it'll still filter out the skin, um, get rid of the wrinkles, but it'll look natural. It won't look like you messed it up. I don't like the way that looks on the rock. I was just showing you can do that if you want. And that's actually a little too big to pull so I'll make it a little smaller, do a little bit of section at a time. Don't pull more wrinkles, that makes it worse. Um, and then you can draw a little bit at a time. Make sure you do this before you crop your image. And the reason why is if you've already cropped your image and expose it, it's going to jump to outside of the image where you have it cropped. And you're going to have to back out of that, go to your, your image, and redo it because it doesn't matter. Every time it will jump off the the screen you won't be able to see it so um, he does have a little funky thing right here I don't know what that is but I'm going to move that off just so there's not that line there and I do this real quick on both eyes um, I always pull it someplace where I see there's a lot of good skin um, and I just do that and that gets rid of his the wrinkles under his eyes uh, you can hit Y to see it before and after real quick um, so you can see a difference there there's a couple little things um, right where his, there's a little shadow right there. So it, normally I'd, I'd take a little more time, I'd do it a little more thorough, but I'm just showing you how to do it. You can adjust it from there. I'm sorry, I've got to ask though, when you go and borrow from there, it's only taking texture, it's not bringing the light value? No, it adjusts, it's on auto. If you were to go back to the tool and hit clone, it would pull over exactly what's there. Okay. But if you do the heel, it automatically pulls in the light from around where you're fixing and fixes it there. Um, this, this, because they did the new paint or the new brush, so you can do lines, you, it eliminates the need to have to jump into Photoshop to fix this stuff. Yeah. You can just do it real quick right here. Um, pull these down and see, I have it on clone. <laughs> so there you go. That's what it does with clone. So put it back on heel. And sometimes it does layer it. These are layers saved in the metadata. So you can see it actually didn't pull it back correctly. Occasionally you will see this, you see it kind of still stuck that way. Take the one, it, it does this when there's two right next to each other sometimes. Take the other one and move it slightly and it'll 
fix it. If you don't do that, it's going to stay like that. Don't print it like that. Um, <laughs> and then uh, he has kind of a little unibrow going and, and a little spot right there. So I'm going to back that down just a hair. Let me get off the the heel clone. Um, get off the compare. So, so just real quick touch up like that um, with the spot removal tool. The new brush makes it really fast and easy to do things. You can also, if you want to make it look just a little bit nicer, up the opacity. If you see hair stuff like that sticking off the side, you can take this. Does that? It pops out automatically for you, um, and it's really easy to just remove little things real quick. It does it does a really good job now on removing just well pretty much anything. So there's there's that. Um, so there's a portrait with this <coughs> one. If I was going to be doing more portraits, I'd probably bring out the, the light in his right eye a little bit. Um, you didn't cover the new radial tool, did you? I did not. You did not. Okay. This is <coughs> the new radial tool. This is really cool. Um, but uh, there is the iris enhancer and I would not recommend doing it on full for anybody because it just makes the eyes look too bright. But the new radial tool is really cool because you can adjust shapes with it. So you make the shape of the eye, you can rotate it down. So it just does the eye and then I always drop it down just not that far, but I drop it down a little bit because I think it looks a little funny if it's too. Oh, well, you see I have it brightening everything else. This little button right here that says invert mask that will either do it for that spot or for everywhere but that spot. I had it on everywhere but that spot. So, um, and same thing on the other side. If you don't start out with it checked, it'll automatically remember how you started out with it. So it went back to the other way. Um, so a little bit in the eyes, that one I didn't adjust the brightness in, so it looks a little funny. Um, but with the eyes and with the the teeth, you just use um, the brush again. You can do the auto mask. You got to be careful with the auto mask, though, because it will spatter all over the place. Um, but if you use auto mask and you you do it really fine, it'll get right where you want it to on the teeth, and it'll get rid of some of the color as well if you have it on teeth whitening, not iris and hands. So there and there's a quick before and after so I mean it's not a perfect image but that took four or five minutes to do that real quick um, next image this one right here this one shows um, this a little bit easier there's a distracting branch right there so you can just pop that out um, and then move this if you drop the opacity a little bit it won't look as as much like it's a spot removal but I mean you can remove stuff pretty quick you can remove this branch right here real quick and it does a, a fairly good job of picking a spot occasionally you get a mouth in your in your spot but for the most part it does pretty good and you can't you can't really tell that you did anything up there so I really like that um, and then this one I was going to show you uh, skin removal but it's basically the same thing I've done the other one um, with most of these I just click and this is one thing where a fast computer comes in because you can just click and there's a little hesitation in between it and I really hate waiting when I'm editing so I always make sure I have a really fast computer um, but you'll notice your computer speed because this uses the processor when you're doing these edits it processes it and if you have a slow computer it's going to take a long time to touch up skin um, so that got rid of that real quick I um, there's more spots of course but I just want to show you that real quick this one has a big rock in the background and this one's a little bit more difficult um, because it is bigger uh, you'd want to do it a section at a time um, and then kind of have to play around with it to see which way you want it to go photographers may look at this and be able to notice it right off the bat but most of your clients won't be able to notice what you're doing um, and then you can spend as much time if it looks if it does if you don't get the look you want pull it into Photoshop fix it that way but mm -hmm. this will help you um, not have to use Photoshop as much you can see it there 
Uh, one way I found to, to get rid of some of it, uh, of the, the spots you see, if you don't want to sit and take the time to line it up just perfect, uh, drop the clarity on the section there, and that'll get rid of some of the lines a little bit. Um, and then I also use the, the uh, gradient tool, and I always will darken corners where I don't want, like I've hidden something or, you know, just kind of mask it out a little bit more. So, I mean, you guys can tell that that rock was there, and I would normally spend a little more time on it, but you can get rid of it, and it's not as distracting as it was before. So, that's the new spot removal tool. Um, and then, of course, the radiant tool I really like um, as well, because it's like the, radi the, well, the new ra radial tool, not the radiant, the radial tool. Because it does a, a circle, you can change the shape. I'm going to raise, um, just fix them a little bit, drop the highlights, raise the shadows. Um, and then you can s just put it right where they are. So, and this, this makes it nice to, to center to focus on what you want people to pay attention to. And they, they have nice bright sun on, there, on the one sides. If you drop it too much, it starts taking away the natural look of the skin. Um, on the highlights, but that's, uh, oh, there you go. So um, that's those two tools. I use those almost every picture. Um, and it takes me usually five minutes. If there's something really distracting, I'll pull into Photoshop if I need to. But uh, I try to avoid Photoshop if I can. It, it kind of slows down your workflow when you have to switch programs back and forth. Um, but that's that's what I do. Really, fairly straightforward. But I really do like the new features in Lightroom 5. So, thank you.